Hi! In today's video I would like to show you how I made this overhead camera rig. This rig allows you to mount a camera here using a screw and point it down at the table so you can film it from over top. I built this rig using very minimal tools and I constructed it out of materials costing less than 30 euros. And just to show where we're going with this, here is a bunch of junk seen from above. Now the first thing I need to do is cut up a number of strips from this sheet of plywood. And to do that I'll be using my jigsaw. And the reason for this is I want to show you that you don't need any special tools for this project. Now the jigsaw is not capable of making very straight cuts. And to compensate for this I'll use the fact that the edges of the sheet of plywood are straight from the factory. And so what I'll do is put an F with an arrow pointing outward on each edge so that I can keep track of which edges are the factory edges. Now this is a 610 by 1220 millimeter sheet of plywood and it's 18 millimeters thick. In American units that would be about 2 feet by 4 feet and about 3 quarters of an inch. So what I'll first do is go along the short edge and make some marks. So I'll first make a mark at 50 millimeters. I'll make another mark at 60 millimeters. I'll make a mark at 190. I'll make a mark at 200. And then I'll turn around my tape measure and make another mark 50 millimeters from the other edge. And then I'll go to the other side and I'll make the same marks over there. The next thing I'll do is connect the marks from one end to the other. So I'll connect the 50 millimeter mark with the 50 millimeter mark, the 60 millimeter mark with the 60 millimeter mark, and so on. So you can just lay out your tape measure like this, find the corresponding marks, and then carefully you can draw a straight line along your tape measure. Of course, if you have a long straight edge, that will be a little bit simple. I've now zoomed in on this corner of the board here. Um, and you can see the line for 50, 60, 190 and 200. And what I'll do next is cut out this line for 50 millimeters, this line here at 200 millimeters. And remember on the other corner of the board, I've also made a line 50 millimeters from the other edge. And I'll cut out that line too. The lines for 190 and 60 millimeters will not be cut. I've now clamped the board to my table with these two clamps here. That just makes the process a little bit more convenient because I can hold both of my hands on my saw. And so, let's get cracking. So now I've flipped around the board and I'll cut out the next 50 millimeter strip. Now I'll make what is for now the final cut, which is this line at 200 millimeters. So now we have three strips. One strip 150 millimeters wide and two strips 50 millimeters wide. And both of the thin strips have a factory edge to them. So now we want to put the three together like this, such that the factory edge of the thin strips faces the flat end of the thicker strip. And this will create a stiff girder which will be the top end of the camera jig. Now remember that we've drawn these 60 and 190 millimeter lines before we started. And these are now roughly 10 millimeters away from the outer edges of the thick strip. And 10 millimeters is just a little bit more than half the thickness of this material. And so what I'll do is make some marks along this line and along the other line as well. And then we'll drill some holes through those marks. So I'll put a mark here at 11, uh, 31, 51, 71, etc. Now I'll be using these 3 by 30 millimeter screws. 
And to use them effectively and to prevent the wood from splitting apart, I'm going to drill pilot holes using a two and a half millimeter drill bit. Uh, it's important that the drill bit is smaller than the screws so that the threads can still grab, but still quite close in size so that you don't put too much pressure on the wood and the wood doesn't split apart. For drilling the holes, I recommend first that you use a sacrificial board on the back and this ensures that the exit hole of the drilling operation doesn't get all gnarly. And the second thing is you want to ensure that you drill as much straight down as you can and you want to definitely avoid putting any sidewards forces on this drill bit uh, because it is quite a small drill bit so it is quite likely to snap if you do so. The next thing I'll do is put the screws in all the holes and I'll put the screws in just deep enough that the tips stick out at the other end of the board. So I've already done one here and if I now put this one through, you can see both of the tips coming out at the other end. And I'll put in the screws in the same manner for all the other holes now. Now we're going to take one of our thin strips and we're going to place it against the screws like this. And now I'll check on this end to try to get the screw to hit the middle of the board and then I'll give it a tap with the hammer. And then I'll go to the other side and try to do the same thing. And then once that's done, I'll just tap it all around. And that should leave indentations in the wood. And you can use these indentations now to drill the pilot holes into this piece of wood and that will hopefully prevent this piece from splitting apart if you drive the screws in. And of course you'll do the same thing to the other piece and then we can screw and glue them together. So I've now attached the first thin strip using only the screws and frankly I'm quite happy with how this feels so I think I'll just skip the step of gluing it. I'll just use the screws to keep it on and I'll continue with the second strip. So I've now screwed in the second thin strip and I'm still happy with how it feels. Uh, it's a little bit off here and there and there are some other imperfections to it, but again, basic tools and it'll do the job. So this part will hold the camera, which will, should go somewhere around here. And so it should be suspended in the air, kind of like this. And so what we need to make next are two feet that will keep this thing in the air. And that's what we'll do next and we'll cut those out of the remainder of our original sheet of plywood. Now we have two factory edges remaining on our original board. This one on the short side over here and the same on the other end over there. And what I'll do is the same thing as what we started with. So I'll mark out a 50 millimeter strip on this side and also on the other side. And then I'll cut that out and then I'll do the same thing on the other side to make two 50 millimeter strips which both have a factory straight edge. So I've now cut out the two strips and both of these strips have a factory edge to them. And these strips will be the feet of the camera rig and they will go on the table a little something like this. And then we need two legs now going up which we still need to cut. And then those legs will support the main beam on the top, which will hold the camera. So the last two parts that we're going to cut are the two legs that will hold up the main beam. And we'll cut that out, of course, from the remainder of our sheet of plywood. Now, our main beam is 150 millimeters wide across here. So we want the legs to also be 150 millimeters wide. And so the first thing we'll do is make a pencil mark here at 150 millimeters and then we'll go to the other side and make a mark there as well connect those again with a straight line like before and then cut out the first leg so i've now cut out both of the legs and so i want to go over once again what has become of our plate so we have this main top section over here and then we have two feet and these will go onto the table 
And then these are the two legs that will hold up this beam over here later on. And the only remainder for our plate is this little strip here. And this is basically waste and everything else was used. Before we can cut down the legs to their proper length, we first need to figure out how high we want the camera to be above the table surface. And this depends a little bit on what you intend to be filming. Now for my purposes, I think it'd be nice if I can get the entire green cutting mat in frame. And then if I want to crop it down a little bit, I can simply adjust the focal length like this, and then I can get to smaller frames. So I'm holding the camera roughly above the mat right now, just using my hand. And I'll measure roughly how high the camera is above the surface. And I'd say it's about 88 centimeters, give or take. So I'll make the leg so that the camera is 90 centimeters above the surface of the table. And then again, if I need to crop it down a little bit, I can just adjust the focal length. So we want the camera to be at 90 centimeters above the surface of the table. And I'll cut out the legs to be 75 millimeters taller than that. So I'll go at 97 and a half. And then of course I'll make a mark at the other end as well and then cut that off. Uh, and the reason that we're adding 75 millimeters will hopefully become apparent in just a moment. So I've now trimmed both of the legs down to 97 and a half centimeters. And the next thing we want to do is join the legs to the main beam. And I want to do that in this way, but for that to work, I first need to cut out these rectangles. And these rectangles are 50 millimeters long because this bit here was 50 millimeters long. And they are 18 millimeters wide because the material is 18 millimeters thick. So I'll cut out these rectangles and then I'll slide the leg into the main beam like this. Now the next step is going to be a little bit weird. We're going to make a cut along this line over here. And the reason for that will hopefully again become apparent in just a moment. So I've now made that cut and this here is the remainder of the leg. And now we have this little block right here and we are going to connect that to the remainder of the beam like this. And for that we'll use the same technique that we used before on these long sides here. So first we drill some pilot holes this way. Then we put in the screws so that the tips stick out on this surface. Then we are going to use a hammer to put in some marks on this section of the wood here. Then we'll drill the pilot holes here, and then finally we'll drive the screws home. So let me go through all those steps on this side, and then we'll finish up the leg on this side. So next we take some screws, and we find our screwdriver. And then we just screw them through until the tips come out at the other end. And then the next step as before. So we have the screws sticking out here slightly. Can you see that? No, you can't. We have the screws sticking out slightly. So the next thing we do is we pick up a hammer. Get this a little bit lined up. And then tap this home. And then we can see the marks here. And these marks are nicely on the center. So I'm happy with this. So I'll drill these out and then connect everything up. Now we turn that around again, find the screwdriver and drive the screws home. So now we have this sort of end plate on our main upper beam 
And what I'll do now to the leg is once again cut out one of these 50 by 18 millimeter rectangles on both sides. Again, so that the leg can slip in there nicely. Seems a little bit weird, but the point will become clear in just a moment, I swear. So I've now made new cutouts in the legs here and here. And so the leg can fit in like this. And the next thing that I'll do is take my drill, but this time with an 8mm drill bit, and I'll drill two holes through this end cap of the main beam. And this will be used to connect the leg to the upper beam using some nuts and bolts. And the point of that is to ensure that you can remove the legs so that you can store the entire thing a bit more compactly. So I've now drilled these two holes here. And now I'll insert the leg on the other end, just let clear out some sawdust. So I'll put the leg in like this, and then I'll stick my drill through the hole. Give it just a little bit of a spin. And that gives me two pock marks on my piece of wood here. And now I can drill out these two holes. And because I can at this point, I'll use the sacrificial boards that I have so that I get a little bit cleaner exit holes. Uh, the exit holes on these holes were pretty damn bad. So I didn't get my alignment quite perfect, so I just uh, took my drill and went through the holes again like this. And now I should have one continuous hole. So I'm going to take a bolt with a washer, put that all the way through. And then on the other end, I'll put a washer again and I'll close it off with a nut. So now we have this leg attached to our camera rig. Uh, the next step, of course, is to do everything all over again on the other side. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, you'll make your life a whole lot easier if you remove this leg once again. So I'll remove this leg and then repeat everything that I've just done on the other side. Uh, and then I should have a nearly finished rig. Now we have three issues remaining for this thing. First of all, it tilts rather easily forward and back. And to solve that, we'll attach these feet that we've already cut up. The second issue is that it's rather wobbly left and right like this. It's not quite stiff enough. And so we have this piece that I've called waste yesterday. Well, it's not waste. Uh, I'm going to cut it in half and make basically triangle braces here and here. And that will stiffen up the frame a bit. And then the final thing we have to do is attach the camera. And just to show you where we're going with this, uh, we're going to attach the camera roughly over here, pointed downwards at the table. So let's start out with just adding the triangle braces. And for that, I'm gonna take this piece of waist that I had. It's 111 centimeters wide. So I'm gonna put a mark at 55 and a half. And I'm just gonna cut that uh, strip in half at that mark. So I've now cut that one strip into two strips. And the next thing I'll do is drill a two and a half millimeter hole on one side and an eight millimeter hole on the other side. So let's start with a two and a half millimeter hole. And I'm just doing this by eye because this entire cross brace thing doesn't have to be precise in any particular way. So just roughly go for the middle and drill out the hole. So those are the two holes. And then we can put them onto the frame. So I'm just going to hold one of these cross braces roughly like this. And this is roughly 45 degrees, I would say. It, again, doesn't matter much. So I'll just hold the piece in place like this. Stri stick my drill through. And make a quick drill tap here. So now I have a little pock mark here and I can drill this through the entire way. And now I'll go find a bolt and I'll put that through and then we can attach the other side. 
And as always, we want this to be nice. So we're going to do a bolt, a washer, then the two plates, attach it a bit like this, then add another washer and then finally the nut. And then we twist this until it's into place like this. And then we'll drill out the two and a half millimeter hole to the other side as well. And then add the final screw. And then that should roughly do it. Again, just touch it off a little bit. And then you can see a little pock mark here. And I can also see, also because of the plies of the plywood, that I'm nicely in the center of the wood. And this is quite important again to prevent the wood from splitting. And then I can just screw this in. So that stiffens up this side substantially. And now I'll just repeat the entire thing on the other side and then the frame should be nice and stiff. So now we want to attach the feet to the legs. And for this, I'll first move out the feet to the front like this because the camera will hang on one side of the rig. And so we need to prevent that side from tipping over. Now on the bottom here, I have propped up the legs on some washers. I have two washers on the front there and one washer here, and it's not quite leaning on that. It's a bit front heavy. And the goal now is when we go back up to the top, that this spirit level is at least roughly level. Now this may not be important to you, but if we're going to do this anyway, we might as well do it right. I've now clamped the foot to the leg using a pair of these quick clamps. Now if you don't have clamps of this type, then you should still be able to do the trick basically the same way, but it'll be a bit less precise, but the camera rig should still work fine in the end. It's important that the foot rests on the table and not the leg, the leg should rest on the washers, and that the factory edge of the feet is facing the table. If all that is the case, you can start drilling the holes. So now I can remove the clamps. And you can see the two marks here. And I'll finish drilling those out right now. Once you finish drilling the holes, the easiest thing to do is lay the camera rig on its back. And then again, we need to ensure that the factory edge is down. And then we can just put the bolts through the holes. And we can wrap it up on the other end with some nuts. So I've now flipped the entire rig around uh, so we can attach the foot to the other side. Again we have to ensure that the factory edge of the foot is facing the table and again we are going to put it mostly forward. Again we're going to put washers underneath the leg but here notice that I have a lot more washers. And this is because we have to now look at level in two different directions. So if we go back up to the top, you can see that it is eh, level enough for me here in this axis, but also very importantly, it is roughly level in this axis in the left to right direction. Uh, and so this is good enough for me. I'm satisfied with this. Uh, so now I'll clamp the foot down again and I'll drill out the holes. All right, so the structure now of the camera rig is complete. Uh, it's certainly not the prettiest thing I've ever built, nor is it the sturdiest, but it is good enough to do the business. So it's quite a bit stiffer now in this side to side direction. And while it's quite simple to tilt it over backwards like this, it's actually quite hard to tilt it forward like this because the legs stick out mostly forward. Now we're going to mount the camera over here in the middle, uh, but that's going to be a little bit difficult because it requires inch standard hardware. And that's a little bit tricky because I live in the Netherlands, which is a metric only country. So let me show you some of the things that you can do to make that work. Now the difficulty is that most cameras have a quarter inch, 20 threads per inch, unified national coarse screw that has to go into the bottom of them. 
And if you have a much larger camera, it will be a 3 8 inch by 16 threads per inch screw. Now these screws are pretty hard to come by here in Europe, but if you look for them, you can find them and you have to find one because there's no other way to get the camera mounted. That's not your only problem though, because you also have to drill a hole through the wood here that will allow the screw to pass. And for that, the most suitable selection I've found is to use a six and a half millimeter drill bit. But that is a little bit rare, and even a seven millimeter drill bit may not be in your arsenal. And so the other thing you can use is an eight millimeter drill bit. Now, if you're going to do that, you will need a washer though to support that. So the nice thing is that a quarter inch 20 screw like this actually fits through an M6 washer like this. So that's very useful for us because you can get M6 washers quite easily. But what you can also buy is an M6 washer that has a larger outer diameter. So if we compare these two, these are both M6 washers, but one is clearly larger than the other. And so if you use a larger washer like this, you can actually get away with drilling a much larger hole than it needs to be. So I'm going to drill a six and a half millimeter hole simply because I have a six and a half millimeter drill. But if you are forced to use an eight millimeter drill instead, then know that you can use a larger washer like this to still make this work. So I've now drilled the hole and put in the screw. And notice in particular that the screw doesn't stick out very far. This is necessary because the hole in the base of your camera usually is quite shallow. So you don't want this screw to stick out too far. If you do find that your screw is too long, what you can do is simply take more washers and basically push the screw further outward simply by inserting more washers behind the wood like this. And if you just stack up enough washers, then at some point you will have a shallow enough screw here that your camera sits flush against the wood. So let me mount the camera and I'll show you a picture of that. I'm obviously going to wrap up using some overhead footage. And the last thing that I want to talk about is how you can tighten these inch standard fasteners into the base of your camera. Uh, the difficulty, of course, is that it's difficult enough to find these inch standard fasteners to begin with and inch standard tooling is also quite difficult to find and buying that tooling for only one screw is a little bit expensive as well. Um, so, of course, you can't just finger tighten it, but that feels a little weird, especially because you're hanging up a relatively heavy and expensive camera and you want it to be mounted stably and securely to the frame. So one thing you can do is simply use a pair of pliers to uh, turn the screw in. Um, people might yell at you because you're going to round over the head, but you should be fine. Um, the other thing I found that works quite well is using an 11 millimeter socket or wrench that fits quite nicely over the head of a quarter inch bolt. You can also consider using uh, wing bolts or thumb screws like these. Uh, but the difficulty here is that it's hard enough to find regular inch standard fasteners and I simply haven't been able to find wing bolts or thumb screws in inch standard sizes. So what I did instead is I modeled and 3D printed this little bit here. And this is a fairly simple model and what you can do is you put your screw in like this um, and then this hexagonal pocket is rather tight. Um, so what you have to do is use either, either a hammer or a vise to press in the screw. Um, and then what you end up with is essentially a thumb screw. And then you can use that to attach the camera to the frame. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you very much again for watching. As always, you can find the required files in the description below. Um, I will also include a little sketch on um, how exactly you need to cut up the uh, plywood board in case that wasn't entirely clear. And of course, the file for this little bit will be down there as well. With that, I'd like to thank you once again for watching. 
Have a great night.